This is CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research near Geneva in Switzerland. This is the entrance. These are the buildings of the headquarters. We are here at CERN. On my left is the um, bubble chamber called Gargamel, made in France, used in the 70s to detect neutral currents as predicted by Steven Weinberg. This is uh, Dr. Paolo Petania standing in front of Gargamel. <laughs> so Paolo, what, uh, what's your, uh, what, what are your aspirations about, about the uh, experiment of the LHC? Well, the things uh, are going probably even beyond the expectation from the point of view of the experiment right now. Um, the machine, uh, the LHC, what we call the machine is the LHC accelerator. The accelerator is, uh, is certainly a very complex and it's very difficult to tame this machine. And so the learning curve starts a bit slowly. But what we can see already now from the limited amount of data or statistics that we can, uh, that we can collect is that the, the experiments are, are behaving, I would say, if you pass, unbelievably well. I mean, meaning that we are really amazed that uh, uh, the efficiency is so is so good. Um, what ju just to I just had a number in front of my eyes uh, this morning was that during the this, uh, start of the run at 70 V, the um, efficiency in working time of the CMS experiment as being of 95%, meaning that over the whole time in which the, the machine was operational, during 95% of this time, CMS was able to collect data and having no trouble and uh, be in position of making fruitful use of uh, whatever was coming from the machine, which is, uh, for, a, for a young experiment, is uh, almost astonishing. because I. I don't know if it, it's rather difficult to explain uh, what can be the complexity of an experiment, but a, 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 a large experiment like CMS or ATLAS, which is having absolutely comparable uh, uh, performance right now, uh, it's, uh, it requires the integration at work of so many systems, and there are so many parameters that the people who's there 24 hours a day, they have to take under control and everything has to be so well matched that the probability that a single thing goes wrong and all of a sudden uh, that particular run is uh, vanished uh, you were not ready it's very very high and that's why I say that we are uh, uh, if I if I may impressed by ourselves but <laughs> by the quality that the whole community managed to to give we just need to give the machine the time it requires to, to be fully under control, to ramp up in uh, uh, even more than power, what we need now is uh, luminosity. Because already power of 70 EV, okay, it's not yet the full power, certainly we are eager to see the 14, but 70 EV it's already something that is unprecedented and it's uh, there is there is new physics already there that we, are, we can look at. This is a machine that is it's nervous, eh? so you, you really have to caress and, and, and kick when is the moment, and, and it's, a, it's a living object. Was this, this intriguing theory that uh, if, the, if the Higgs boson is really, so to speak, God's particle, then it would, in principle, be able to, from the future, act back on things in such a way that it is never discovered. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, which is, for, for a science fiction book, is, yeah. uh, is, is an intriguing uh, yeah. theory. Why not? There are so many difficult choices that have been done during the years. It is not at all a, a small probability. I think that it's very difficult to understand from the outside. The idea is that, okay, this is, these are 
uh, experiment and, and the machine which took so much time to be prepared, so much time to be put uh, all together and that, that it's a failure whenever something goes wrong. Uh, it has to be put in the perspective that in any case it's a program which is supposed to last for 10, 15, maybe even 20 years. So, of course we are much happier if uh, next year we can claim, okay, look, fantastic, where is our Nobel? Uh... <laughs> the discovery of the Davian disease, which is associated usually to Carlo Rubio, right? Which, I mean, who got the Nobel Prize for that? So the ring which was used for that was the SPS, which is here, and then the larger hydro collider was built later on. And it's the same tunnel as left. And you have, of course, the protons going in one direction, counterclock and, and clockwise. Tevatron. At the Tevatron, we had the proton and hydro. So they could stay in the same tunnel because the magnets, uh, which bend the direction of the proton and anti proton, have different polarity on the particles. So you can keep them in the same pipe. Mm -hmm. Instead, here you need two different ones. And then you have a so-called collimators that are focused on the beam and then you have the interaction at the different experiments. So as I told you, we have four atlas that you're going to see later, mm -hmm. which we belong to. <laughs> and then we have CMS, mm -hmm. uh, Alice, you saw the model, and Alice CD. Right? And uh, Atlas and CMS are multi-purpose because they have essentially a spherical symmetry. So they are really capable of doing several different measurements. Instead, the LS and LHCB are more focused. So LHCB is for rare decays of particles. Mm -hmm. So they look for deviation from the prediction to see in case we don't discover something, new particles can appear as a deviation in rates of normal particles. And then we have Alice uh, for the work on plasma. So I guess we can continue walking. <laughs> So, um, and if you walk there, you have an example of a dipole. So this is one of the elements in the LHC. So we have magnets that are needed to keep the path on track, right? And the other one works in it. So this is one example. And as I was telling you, we have two pipes in each one, right? Because uh, they have the, the protons have the same charge, so necessarily you cannot use the same beam mm -hmm. to bend them together. And this is one of the dipole, and we have, of course, a thousand of those. And the problem we had in 2008 there was the interconnection between two magnets, and we had a very tiny, tiny resistor that essentially lost the resistance, and then we were not uh, superconductive anymore. And then there was a, such a huge force that pushed the dipole away. They really uh, got taken away from their su mechanical support, uh, so they really got squeezed. Um, so they weren't conducting? No, 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 they were not operating at all, mm -hmm. so we lost almost one sector, so that's why it took us one year essentially to repair, but now mm -hmm. everything planned to arrive. <laughs> that we cannot really store it at CERN. So we do a first processing. So we, as Michele was telling you, we reconstruct the data and then we spread it all over the world. We have 11 so-called tier one major computing center and then we have so-called tier two, smaller ones and then tier, tier three, which are smaller and smaller as a concept. And essentially, if you volunteer, you could be hosting the LHC data in your computer home. So you can just connect your computer on the web, sign up, and then you would receive the data. So you would help the community. And then uh, most of the time you have the readout electronics outside here. So you do a first processing. Usually you do analogical to digital converter on the spot and then you bring the digital signal up for processing them. That really holds together the relation between the K length and, and the product of delta E times delta T is let's say constant, mm -hmm. right? So delta E is the width, so the um, how wide the, the, the peak would look like. So if mm -hmm. you look at the mass, what are the possible mass values that the particle can have because it's not a fixed value. And if it decays fast, then uh, of course it's uh, wider because the product has to be larger than a given number. Okay. That's the point. 